this is Miss Estes. I'm here today to show you how to make a family favorite. We're gonna make colorful deviled eggs. This is a recipe my mother started years ago and it is a family favorite. So we're gonna be working with a protein food today, which are eggs. They're generally inexpensive, although during this corona time, they can be hard to be found. So you may have to look extra hard to find them. So, when we start cooking, I am gonna start by putting my apron on, but I did wanna say, together, we can bake the world a better place or cook the world a better place. So I am gonna be wearing an apron today because um, I don't want to get coloring, food coloring on my clothing today. And as we've learned in the past, washing our hands is incredibly important. We learned the importance over the last few days about washing our hands properly, making sure that we suds them up, fronts and back, in between fingers, up our wrist, and even hitting those nail beds to help prevent against viruses. And we're working with eggs today, so we don't want to get salmonella, which is typically found in raw poultry products. So as I wash my hands, I'm gonna be ready to go. And I wanna show you about eggs real fast. So what determines if this egg is a white egg or is a brown egg? Anybody know? It's actually the hen that laid it. So regardless if it's a green shell, it really doesn't have a nutritional difference. It just is determined by the hen that laid it. So let's say that you have a carton of eggs in your refrigerator and you're not sure if they're in date and if they're um, good eggs or bad eggs. How can you tell? So if you bought from a farmer um, and it doesn't come in a carton that has a date stamp that is reliable, then you can take a glass of water and you can drop your egg down in it. This egg is floating. That means that this is a bad egg because the egg's anatomy, it has a larger end and a tapered end. The larger end is where the air sac is. And as the air, egg ages, the air sac grows and that will cause the egg to be a floater. So let's check one of the other eggs. So that egg sunk down to the bottom and that's a good sign because that means that is a more fresh egg. Um, typically, if it's a nice fresh egg, it will lay down on its side, such as this. As the egg does start to age, because they're good for about a month, it will start to stand up on its tapered end because that air sac is getting larger. And then, of course, if it's getting to the point where it really shouldn't be used, it starts to float up in the water. So I just wanted to show you that trick in case you ever have a question about your eggs and are they good eggs or are they a little bit out of date? So we're gonna get our saucepan and what we're gonna do is we're going to add our eggs, our fresh eggs, we'll leave that bad one behind. We're gonna lay them down and this particular recipe calls for seven eggs. So we're gonna lay those in our saucepan and we're going to add cold water on top. We're aiming for about an inch above the top of the eggs. When we get that water on top, we're gonna to take them to the stove. We're gonna go ahead and turn them on high and we're going to bring it to a boil. There's a couple of ways people do hard cooked eggs. Some people bring it to a rolling boil and then they time from that specific point. Other people will bring it to a rolling boil, turn their stove top off, put a lid on and time from that point. So there's many different ways that you can do your hard cooked eggs. So I've got this on my stove top. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to high and I'm gonna let this come to a boil. So I'm gonna cook my hard cooked eggs and then I'll be back with the next step. Okay guys, we are back. Our eggs have now hard cooked. So we're gonna take them off of the stove. We are going to go ahead and drain the hot water. And I'm gonna go ahead and rinse them with cold water just to stop that cooking process. We sort of want to shock them so they will not continue to cook. We're gonna rinse off that water again. And then a trick a friend of mine taught me was to take the eggs. I'm gonna take one out because I actually did a couple of extra just in case they don't peel nicely. So take them in the saucepan and it's like bumper car eggs. So take them and shake them by shaking them 
it starts the cracking process. I'm going to move the middle one to the outside so it gets a little bumper car action as well. And that's going to help us be able to peel our eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and add them to a bowl of cold ice water. Now, once they're in the cold water, you're ready to peel them. Fresh eggs, as I mentioned before, fresh eggs are the most difficult to peel. Whereas older eggs, when the air sac starts to grow, the shell starts to loosen up a little bit and you actually end up with a prettier product. So I'm gonna peel my eggs under the water. I find that it's easier to peel them when they're in water. And when I have them peeled, I'm gonna take them out, set it on my cutting board. I do wanna to check to make sure that my egg is cooked through. So I'll check this very first one. And it is. It's nice and set in the center, so I know I'm good. So I'll continue on and peel, peel these eggs. Now there is a hack that you may have seen on the internet. If you want a perfectly peeled egg, this one's not going to be very kind to me. It's starting to chip up some. A perfectly peeled egg, if you will take your eggs before you cook them, and on the larger end where that air cell is, pierce it with a straight pin, you don't have to go very deep, probably about an eighth of an inch. That will allow that air sac to um, even up and it will make a perfectly oval egg. So you may have noticed before when you've hard cooked your eggs that your eggs look like somebody took a nibble off the end of them after you've boiled them. That is because that air sac, that is where that is. So I'm gonna continue peeling my eggs. Okay guys, I am back. I am, I have all of my eggs peeled. So now I'm taking my eggs and I'm cutting them in half lengthwise. I'm taking out the yolk, which is the yellow part, and I'm putting that in my strainer and I'm dropping the egg white halves down in a bowl of water so that I can lightly rinse those off. That way if I have any extra debris on the outside of my egg white, I can get that off so that they'll color nicely. Now, the anatomy of an egg. We've already talked a little bit about the air sac. We also have on the inside the yellow part, which is called the yolk, and then the white part is called the albumum. The white part has two components. There's the thick albumum and there's the thin. The thick is what you find when you crack that egg. It stays tight and close to the yolk, and then the thin is the more runny part of the egg white. And why is it called the white? Because when you cook it and it coagulates, then it does turn white in color. So if I were trying to watch my cholesterol or my fat, then I may wish to only eat egg whites. A lot of people will just eat the white part if I had any concerns there. So I'm going to put my yolk again in the strainer and I'm gonna set that aside for just a second. I'm gonna take that bowl of water and lightly wash off my egg whites. And I'm gonna rinse my fingers real fast. Now, what I've prepared are different food coloring cups. So what I have in the cups are water, and then I'm just gonna add a few drops of the food coloring. So I'm thinking I'm going to do these orange. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the yellow, and I'm gonna put a drop of the red to make orange. That way I'll mix it up a little bit and I won't necessarily have yellow on yellow. So I can take something to stir that up. Okay, so now once I've rinsed off my whites, I'm mainly concerned on what's on the outside because the inside is where my filling's gonna go and that's not gonna make a big difference. I'm gonna go ahead and take those rinsed off and some of my eggs have a little bit of the membrane. As I peeled them, the membrane stayed on it. That membrane's gonna sort of mess up my aesthetics. Doesn't affect the taste, but it is gonna change the way it looks. So I'm gonna try to peel that off. And I'm going to let them sit in the coloring for just a little while. I have found over the years that lighter pastel eggs make a more attractive deviled egg, colored deviled eggs, as opposed to really harsh and bright, vibrant colors, because sometimes that's more unnatural. So I like the pastels a little more. You know you can use your art and use your color skills 
and you can mix up colors. So there's definitely more variations than what I have going on. Your box of four different colors can make lots of different color. Now, it is not necessary to have your yolks put in the um, strainer. That's just an extra step. Sometimes I like to take this step because it helps to break up the egg yolks and it makes it a little bit more smooth. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the back of my spoon and I'm mashing down on those egg yolks. And as you can see, it's starting to come out through the strainer, the small little holes. That's just gonna ensure that I don't have lumpy eggs. So I'm gonna mash on this for just a second and break up any egg yolks that I still have. And it's gonna have finer particles. It's just gonna be, make a smoother mixture. Again, it's not necessary. Some people, sometimes I don't bother with it. I just sort of stir them up really well before I mix in my other ingredients. So I'm gonna see what I have here. And some did go through. I'm gonna go ahead and add all of that to my mixing bowl. And I'm gonna rake the sides off so that I don't waste any of my yolk. A trick my mom taught me was, um, if you have an egg that doesn't peel very well, you can take the yellow and you can chop it up very finely and add that to your yolk mixture. That will help you have more yolk mixture and that will um, increase what you have so that you have a fuller egg. Because sometimes you come up a little short on your filling. So I've also found that these do not take that long to dye. So I'm gonna go ahead and check my colors real fast before I continue mixing. This orange is not really very colorful. The pink is, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it out. The blue is a nice color as well. And then the green is a nice color. So I'll tell you, I did put a drop of vinegar in the other colors, whereas I didn't in the orange. So I think that accounts for those coloring a lot faster. So I'm gonna turn my eggs upside down as I take them out of the color. You may have memories of coloring eggs. I know at our house we had to put down paper towels or newspapers or something else to keep it from coloring the surfaces. So that's why I put down the brown paper for today. So I'm just turning those upside down so any remaining color will drain out of them. And I am gonna let those go just a little bit longer because those are not coloring up as nicely due to the fact that I didn't put the vinegar. So let's go back to the filling real quick. So, so far we have smoothed out our egg yolks. So for this recipe, it's a modification of Paula Deen's and it does have mayonnaise. It has a fourth of a cup of mayonnaise. When you're measuring it, you wanna spoon it into your cup and you want to level it off so that you ensure that you don't have air pockets. So I'm gonna add my mayonnaise. I like to use Dijon mustard if I have it, but during this time and supplies are limited, I didn't have any on hand. So I'm going with just a regular yellow mustard. So a teaspoon of that. And I like to do a mix of sweet and dill. That way you have the sweet and you have the salty all in one taste. So I personally um, switch it up and do a teaspoon of each sweet and dill relish. And then lastly, it calls for salt and pepper to taste. So I like a little bit of salt with my eggs. So I'm gonna give it a few cranks. And then for the pepper, I don't like as much pepper. So I'm only gonna do um, something like that. So when you read a recipe and it says season to taste, what that means is truly mix it up and give it a taste. So what you will find is, when you're making deviled eggs, if you go too heavy handed on your liquids, you'll end up with a runny product, and that's not a good thing. If you go too light on your liquids, your liquids being mannered or relish as well, because it's got some juice with it, then you will end up with a very dry product. Deviled eggs are a little bit temperamental. If it's too dry, then it has a terrible mouthfeel when you eat that deviled egg. It sort of dries you out and puckers you up. If it's too runny, it may taste really good, but then it doesn't want to stay in the egg. It wants to run out. So you want it to be nice and creamy, and you want it to sort of hold its shape so that it's not running off of the spoon. So I think I have the right consistency here for my mix. 
And I'm gonna check my orange eggs to see if they have colored a little bit more. And it looks like we're going fairly light on those and that'll be fine. I could aim to put it in a different color and see and blend the colors, but I'm just gonna go with these. So now that my eggs have drained, I most definitely could take my eggs and scoop them in with a spoon and that's probably going to be the fastest and the easiest way. But I wanna show you another trick real fast. So what I'm gonna be using today is a pastry bag, a pastry bag and a pastry tip. This tip has a star edge to it. It has a very wide opening. That's important because I'm using relish and if I had a very small opening, these little pickle cubes would not want to come out. So you wanna have a nice opening. If you don't have a pastry bag, you could always use a Ziploc bag if you wanted to be more precise in this, or again, just use the spoon. So my pastry bag that I have on hand is extremely large for this amount of deviled eggs. So I'm going to unroll it, so I roll it backwards. I'm gonna take my spoon and I'm going, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to taste it, I told you, salt and pepper to taste. And it does taste good. So I'm ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna fill up the pastry bag. And I'm gonna to try to get all of the filling I can possibly get from the one hand into my pastry bag. Also take any egg mixture that may be at the top and press that down. Then I'm going to twist it and you can see the egg mixture is starting to come out. So I'm going to go ahead and put my eggs in the carrier. Okay, so now that I have all of my eggs in the carrier, I'm going to take my pastry bag with my tip and I'm going to press and when I have it full, I'm going to stop pressing and pull up. That's going to um, ensure an even mixture. So I'm going to do that to all of my eggs, filling them up as equal as possible, so sort of to the top. As my pastry bag starts to um, get less in it, I'm going to twist it so that I can continue to get that um, egg mixture out. So I'm going to turn it inside out, sort of and press. And I'm going to be short. It looks like I'm going to be short one egg. So let me rinse off my hands. And I had enough filling for all of my eggs except for one because I like them to be nice and full instead of skimpy. So I can take that one out. That's why my mother said if she had one that didn't want to peel very nicely, she would take it and chop it up and add it to the filling because sometimes you come short on the filling. Now, lots of people like to garnish theirs with things like olives. Um, I've always used paprika. So that is a spice, it's a pepper. It's very mild, so it has no heat to it. Some people are tempted to open up the jar and just sprinkle. That sort of results in an uneven um, amount. So what I'm gonna do is I put it in a little ramekin and I'm going to lightly go over each of my eggs and try to hit the yellow part as opposed to the part that I colored. So that is how I'm gonna garnish my eggs. And this is it. These are the deviled eggs that my mom used to make every holiday. Um, she would only color them around the Easter holiday, but these are our deviled eggs. So thanks for joining in today, and I hope you guys have an awesome break.